everybody, I'm back! <laughs> Sorry for the wait, it's been crazy lately. As you know, I went to a con last weekend and it was good. Uh, I got a lot of fun stuff and then finally got out of the house. <laughs> I even got to meet the miraculous ladybug herself. But you guys know me, I'm more of a Veracica simp. <laughs> anyway, I planned to have this out sooner, but, but ended up sleeping three days away. Good thing I had Chloe pre-sketched, right? <laughs> uh, before I get started, I'd like to say I haven't been super into the show for some time. I dropped off around season two, not because I didn't like it, but my Netflix account was canceled, so yeah. <laughs> and I know I could watch the show anywhere else, but I, I prefer the French dub. There's a lot of little jokes that, you know, the English dub kind of misses. Plus, the voice acting is just softer and sounds nice to me. I have I have issues with sound regardless, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, from what I can remember from the show, there was a lot going on that didn't make much sense, like their ages for one thing. In the French dub, they're middle schoolers, and in the English dub, they're high schoolers. Though, I prefer the middle school ages, mainly due to all the love BS they get into. It feels very middle schooler, you know? You could say Miraculous Ladybug is basically a, a French telenovela. It's just all over the place with crazy theories and crazy scenarios and a lot of cop-outs. <laughs> I am probably going to re-watch the show to really understand what's been happening, but from what I've gathered, Chloe was done dirty in her character development, which I'll talk about later. I also, I also wanted to say... I highly recommend you guys check out Smarty Pants. I'm going to leave a link in the description. But their channel really dives deep into all the miraculous Ladybug lore and stuff. So I've kind of been watching them instead of actually watching the episodes, which I will do. Just, I feel like I, I, feel like I get a much better sense of what's happening when he explains it. Because there's a lot of little details that my brain doesn't really pick up on until I watch it like four or five times. So, yeah. But... If you guys want to know like weird little things or in or just enjoy a really good time, I suggest you guys check out Smarty Pants. Uh, but anyway, on to the design. So it's no secret I love Chloe. From the moment she screened Marinette's name, I knew she was my favorite. <laughs> Plus her design is very well put together. Her 3D model, not so much. Now I'm going to level with y'all. I'm not a 3D fan. Don't get me wrong. When done correctly, it's beautiful. But I'm the type of person that wants cartoony. If I wanted to see characters look just like regular people, I'd watch live action TV. Plus, Miraculous Ladybug seems to be way lazier with their 3D models than most shows I've watched. I mean, half the cast don't even look like they belong in the same universe. For example, Rose and Julica. But thankfully, Chloe looks like she belongs. She may not be as pretty as Adrienne or Marinette's models are, but she still fits in with them. And honestly, there's nothing even wrong with her design in general. On its own, it's almost perfect. Her hairline needs to be pushed back. Very, It's very irritating since her face is already scrunched up and makes her face look too busy. And her lipstick is two shades too light. If she wants to stick to nude colors, she should go two shades darker due to her skin color. Uh, other than that, the model's fine. Though her concept art is just, oh my god, wow. I'd kill for this Chloe. The black and white looks so good on her. <laughs> and as you can see, I referenced her concept design in my redesign. I also really love Chloe's curls. I wish they did more with them. So I mixed Chloe's current ponytail with her concept's loose hair and replaced the sunglasses with a thin ribbon bow. Since she never really uses her sunglasses maybe once or twice a season. <laughs> Uh, as for the makeup, I already explained. However, I did keep the blue eyeshadow. I know a lot of people think it's tacky, but I love it. Only a few people can pull it off, and I think with Chloe's style and fashion background, she can. I genuinely believe that it was the lipstick that was throwing everybody off. <laughs> anyway, I know I said Chloe's design was fine, but this video would be way shorter if I didn't actually change her outfit. Now, Chloe's original outfit is very cute, but honestly, looks like what a mom would wear. <laughs> if she's a middle schooler, this isn't really what she'd wear. Most kids this age try to dress... Try to dress as what they think adults wear, but in reality, it's more what models and celebrities wear. And with Chloe's cash flow, she'd be able to do it. Though, I won't lie, it was hard to figure out Chloe's style of fashion since, 
So we don't see her in anything new very often. So going by her makeup and concept art, I imagine she's into 70s inspired couture, like think boho chic. Plus, I imagine she'd be very into American fashion, like Valley Girl stuff. So I gave her an off-the-shoulder top with puff sleeves and an open back romper. And yeah, I made it a peach color for the obvious reason that Chloe's color palette shouldn't match her miraculous. Like, there are like five characters that match their superhero selves while in their civilian clothes. Like, hello, I know Gabriel is super smooth brain, but it's ridiculously obvious. For superheroes, subtlety is important. Plus, I mean, even some of the miraculous themselves are way too obvious. Chloe's especially. Like, how would Chloe or any holder wear this around town and not and not immediately recognize who they are? It's literally a bee. <laughs> At least Adrian and Marinettes are able to blend in and not seem so obvious. That one off topic. Uh, <laughs> for the rest of Chloe's design, I had my roommate help out. We decided that Chloe should be a bit taller than the other girls due to her parents' height, but would also show that she's even more of a model type. As for the shoes, I chose simple brown horse boots. We all know the type who wear these. Don't lie. Plus, I figured Chloe could change into any type of shoe and it would still work with her outfit. And for the smaller details, I just added a bit more gold embellishments to really hint that she could be Queen Bee in a way due to the color palette. But, you know, it would be a lot harder to figure it out. <laughs> and then I gave her a beauty mark. Obviously, it's not a real beauty mark. It's something she would draw on. Seeing as how she and Julika are the only two that actually wear makeup I think it would make more sense that this is like this is Chloe trying to act more like an older girl by you know by adding a lot of a lot more makeup and a lot more embellishments to like how she talks and dresses and does stuff <laughs> but anyway uh on to Queen Bee <laughs> Okay, Chloe's hero outfit is perfect. I mean it. It really is the perfect design. It's not too busy. It's got very soft and simple lines. Her mask makes sense since it looks more like a makeup look and her hair, and her hair, perfect. But after finding out from the episode Kiro Nico that Miraculous users can change their outfits based on their attitude, I think that the OG version of Chloe's suit would be the perfect redemption suit. Because, as you can see, I went with a more eviler suit. Not that Chloe is evil, she's mostly just a brat kid who's never heard the word no. <laughs> so for Chloe's new suit, I mixed it with a few of her akumatized versions, like, like her Miracle Queen and Wasp Queen looks. I mean, they're just inverse of her original colors, but still. Plus, when she does get the more nicer looking suit, it'll be a shock when the colors change to more yellow than black. Also, this has kind of been an issue of mine ever since I saw the show. The eyes and hairstyle slash colors of the characters never seem to change. Only a few characters get the hair dye treatment, and so far, Cat Noir and Julika are the only ones who got the color eye treatment, <laughs> while everyone else just looks like themselves. And now you know the magic used makes it harder to figure out who they are, but come on! There are six Kwamis with, like, with crazy eye colors. Use them! <laughs> Sorry. Uh... I also think the whites of Tiki's eyes should also be blue, like the bee Kwame. They're both insects. I don't understand why Tiki's eyes aren't like a different shade. <laughs> it's so weird. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's why I made Chloe's eyes more like her Kwame's. As for her hair, I just made it bigger <laughs> since I'm a sucker for a beehive. So why not make her ponytail a beehive hybrid? <laughs> Uh, I also darkened her blonde hair and made the black highlight longer while also adding a second highlight. Not for any reason, just mostly because I liked it. <laughs> the last few pieces of her design were added kind of last minute, like her fur collar, because, because like, rich people always make me think of fur for some reason. And I gave her heels. I know it's not the most practical thing, but with the added wings, I figured it wouldn't be so bad. Speaking of wings... I really hate how she and Ladybug don't have wings. Like, there's concept art for them, yet we still haven't seen it, and I'm tired of waiting. <laughs> I also gave the wings a honeycomb print, just like the costumes. 
if you zoom in on some of the costumes, you, you can see the type of print it is. See? <laughs> That's pretty much all I have in terms of design, though I will say this. Why on earth would a creator make a character only to hate them so much that they destroy all the development they made with them? <laughs> Like, I get making a character that's not supposed to be liked or a good person. That's normal. But to actually hate your own character is crazy to me. Like, Chloe could still try to be better but slip up sometimes. That's pretty normal for kids to backtrack into what they're used to. Plus, Lila would have been a fine replacement. She's shown way more promise to be evil. I really just don't understand the creator's decision. Not to mention the half-sister Zoe came out of nowhere. Three seasons and not one time was she hinted at, but like that even matters since she's clearly Chloe's replacement. And all I can say about Zoe is, what the fuck is this hero suit? It's awful. For one, the line work is way too sharp, and two, it looks more like a wetsuit than anything. Though I will say I like her transformation scene. If someone could mix Chloe's with Zoe's, I think it would look amazing, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. <laughs> But anyway, Chloe was robbed and run over by the police car she called. She was just done so dirty. <sighs> well, I hope you all enjoyed this because I'm going to work on Luca next. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> There's just a lot about him I got to talk about. So get ready for that. And remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!